Hi everyone, welcome to lab exercise 7.3 where we will be performing urine analysis. Um, if you were face to face, we would be doing the urine analysis in real life, but online scan this QR code to view the urine analysis page. Go ahead and click investigate. When we investigate, we can see that we are pretending to be a primary care physician with these four patients. We are going to interpret the results of one patient together, and then you will be responsible for interpreting the results of the other three patients. So go ahead and scan this QR code and let's click on Billy Streams. Billy Streams has been urinating frequently, often waking up at night to go to the bathroom. He reports feeling thirsty all the time and has very little appetite. Patient is a 34-year-old man who is 5'10 and weighs 240 pounds. Uh, he has no major family history of heart disease, cancer, or diabetes, but patient also reports minor shortness of breath when doing very minor exercise like climbing stairs. Patient also reports drinking alcohol in moderation, but is a non-smoker. He is taking medically prescribed diet pills to lose weight. If we hover over the history, we can see that he's had surgery at the age of 22 to repair cartilage in the knee and tonsils removed at age 10. Uh, he works in IT of a major company and is not married and does live with his mother who has four cats. His exam findings are unremarkable with a normal body temperature, uh, pulse rate, and blood pressure. So let's look at the urine. Here we have the urine. It is a light yellow color. It says pale yellow transparent. It has a fruity smell and we can look at this urine test strip. If we compare the urine test strip colors uh, to the chart, we can see that they tested positive for glucose, negative for protein and negative for ketones. We'll get there in a second. So we're going to be observing this urine and interpreting the results based on this chart. So if there is a pale yellow color, this person is extremely hydrated or even overly hydrated. If the odor is fruity, it may uh, indicate the presence of glucose, which is a product of diabetes. If it's only slightly sweet, there may be ketones present, but a very strong fruity smell indicates glucose or sugar. Now these test results. These test strips have uh, four different little boxes. We're not going to be using the fourth one, but we're going to pay attention for the first three. The top one is negative on this test strip because you see no coloration. If it had turned purple, that would have indicated a positive result. The second box, however, is dark green on this image, which indicates a very high amount of glucose in the urine, which is highly unusual. And then we have a brownish coloration, which is a negative result, and an orangish coloration, which we are not paying attention to that the last one. So this patient did only test positive for glucose. If we test positive for glucose, uh, which means a change from yellow to light green for a small amount or dark green for a large amount, and this is dark green, which highly indicates diabetes. Um, so this is our interpretation for this patient. Um, we're going to record our results for our patient. The color was pale yellow. The odor was fruity. And they tested positive for the presence of sugars, but negative for proteins and negative for ketones. Um, question number one says, what possible diagnosis do we think? We think it's diabetes. Please write in complete sentences. I'm not because I'm typing with one hand. Um, and it says, why do you think this? So the reason that we believe this patient has diabetes is because of the fruity odor and the presence of glucose, the positive glucose test. Pale yellow by itself is not an indication for concern because somebody may be very hydrated naturally. They like water. They drink a lot of liquids. But along with the fruity smell, along with the presence of glucose, this indicates uh, polydipsia or extreme thirst, which is present in patients with diabetes. Now, we interpreted patient number one together. It is your responsibility to go over patient two, three, and four. To go back to the case studies, you click the menu button, and then you can view each individual patient. For instance, Penny she tested negative for all of her test results, but 
Her urine has a cloudy whitish appearance and a foul odor. So what might that indicate? Make sure to view your chart um, to give you an idea of what the correct answer might be. Next, we will be modeling dialysis. We're going to model dialysis by setting up a uh, dialysis experiment. And this experiment is going to be it representing the process of a patient going through dialysis or the natural process that the kidneys do during normal kidney function. We're going to do this by using dialysis membrane, which is a semi-permeable membrane uh, made out of cellulose. So small molecules can fit through it, but very large molecules cannot. Inside of the dialysis membrane, we will be filling this tube with iodine or an iodine solution, watered down iodine. Outside of the uh, semi-permeable membrane is a starch solution. I want you to be thinking about what these two solutions might represent. As soon as we set up the experiment, we need to make some observations and fill them out on the chart here. It says, what is the color of the solution inside the membrane? The color of the iodine, just like in this image here, is going to be brown, okay? Um, the color outside of the membrane is going to be either clear or whitish, okay? Clear or white. This is at zero minutes. Then we're going to start a timer and let it sit there. And I want you to see what happens when iodine mixes with a starch solution. So as soon as the iodine reacts with the starch, we get this dark blue inky color, which is normal for this type of experiment. So after it sits there for about five minutes, we should end up with something that looks like this, where we see some particles move outside and some particles are still inside the dialysis tubing. So what are these small particles that are able to move from side to side of this membrane? Well, that's the iodine because iodine is a single atom, whereas starch is a very large macromolecule. And starch does turn blue when it reacts with iodine. So what you'll see in your observations at five minutes is that this should be a light brown or an amber color. We're gonna go with amber. But outside is going to be either light blue or blue and streaky. So after five minutes, you should see a strong reaction. This proves that the iodine is leaving the semi-permeable membrane, just like waste will leave the uh, nephron of the kidney. Speaking of nephron, if you scan this QR code, you will go to a 3D model of a nephron, which you can make larger and you can click on the different parts of the nephron um, and uh, move it around and view all these different things. So for instance, the glomerulus is inside of the Bowman's capsule. Then we have the proximal convoluted tubule, which will go down the descending arm of the loop of Henle down the up the ascending arm of the loop of Henle to the distal uh, convoluted tubule straight into the collecting duct. So make sure that you are aware of all of those parts of a nephron because you will be tested on them. Now looking at the parts of a nephron, remember our experiment here is modeling dialysis, which is the same thing that the nephron is doing. So inside of the bolus is the blood or inside the iodine packet is the blood. Once osmosis starts to happen, we're pushing those solutes out of the uh, uh, glomerulus into the Bowman's capsule because of the cortex and medulla, which have a pressure gradient or is osmotic gradient, which is kind of what this solvent or the starch solution represents because the uh, iodine inside the packet or the waste products inside the blood would not be able to exit into the nephron without that osmotic pressure. Um, so as it continues, it will go down the collecting duct and collect your urine, which is where this urine is created. A dialysis patient is not able to do that. So we artificially pump their blood through the dialysis tube and keep replenishing the solvent until all of the waste is removed from the blood. So let's interpret um, our results again. After 10 minutes, we will see an even lighter light yellow color and an even darker blue color. Number one says the iodine is a single atom while starch is a large macromolecule. 
in this experiment, which solute is passing through the membrane? Well, it would have to be iodine because iodine is so much smaller than the starch. And that blue color proves that it's iodine moving because the starch is turning blue when it comes into contact with the iodine. Uh, number two says, what does the iodine represent? Well, it's gonna represent your blood, whereas the blue color uh, the final color represents the waste leaving your blood, while the starch solution represents either the fluid inside of the uh, dialysis machine or the pressure gradient created by the medulla of the kidneys. Uh, number five says, what does the color change prove? Well, it proves that our experiment was uh, effective and that wastes were removed from the blood. And this represents dialysis. How could we make this experiment even more efficient? Well, if we just changed it to a new solution, we would increase that pressure gradient over and over and over again, which is how real dialysis works. Uh, we constantly flush the solvent until all the waste products are removed from the blood. Uh, thank you for joining me this week, and I hope that y'all have a wonderful week, and I'll see y'all next week for 